All right, next uh, video lecture here, we're just going to take a little bit of time to talk in a little bit more detail about the pathway of blood through the heart and um, also out into the pulmonary and systemic circuits. Much of this we've already covered. I'm just going to, some of this is going to be review. Some of it will be new. So we've already talked about how the heart is a double pump. It has to pump blood out to the lungs for oxygenation and that is called our pulmonary circuit and then blood also has to be pumped from the left side of the heart out to all body systems, all parts of the body to provide oxygenated blood to all of your cells and that's called the um, systemic circuit. And so what we're seeing here, I've got written out here, this is the actual pathway of blood through the pulmonary circuit and this is a story that you do need to know. Um, and when we cover blood vessels in Unit 3, you're going to learn a lot more stories like this as we study the pathway of blood throughout the body. But this is something, the terminology here, you need to know this story. You should be able to reproduce this story. It's not too hard if you understand heart anatomy and heart function and what it needs to do. Some basic stuff It's not too hard to learn. Um, all right, so our pulmonary circuit this is telling us we've got blood that comes into the right atrium, okay, and this blood is deoxygenated or low in oxygen. It's not completely deoxygenated, but it's low in oxygen. And it's high in CO2 because it's picked up CO2 from your tissues. That enters the right atrium. Then it has to pass the tricuspid valve. And it's going through that atrioventricular orifice on the right hand side of the heart. From there it enters your right ventricle. Okay, the right ventricle squeezes the blood up past the pulmonary semilunar valve. That goes into the pulmonary trunk. Okay, and the pulmonary trunk, that's a big giant vein that is, I'm sorry, artery. <laughs> it's a big giant artery that is taking blood away uh, away from the right hand side of the heart and then it splits here's your pulmonary trunk it splits into large arteries called pulmonary arteries that carry that deoxygenated blood to the left and the right lungs um, all right and at the very beginning of the chapter here we mentioned that big arteries uh, divide up into smaller arteries which eventually divide up into very small arteries as they get into specific locations. Those are called arterioles. So your pulmonary arteries are eventually going to divide up into pulmonary arterioles that exist all throughout your lungs on the left and the right hand side. Arterioles lead to capillaries called the pulmonary capillaries. Those are microscopic blood vessels. They wrap around the little air sacs in the lungs that kind of look like grapes. Those are called alveoli in the lungs. And that's where you have your O2 gas existing inside those little uh, air sacs in the lungs. Those are wrapped in capillaries. And that's where you have your gas exchange. CO2 goes out from the blood, O2 comes in. Um, all right, so that you have the gas exchange in the capillaries. That blood, which is now oxygen rich and CO2 poor, goes into pulmonary venules. Those are little tiny microscopic veins. Those lead to the larger pulmonary veins and those pulmonary veins connect into the left atrium. All right, now let's go back to visible body and just take a view of that on a rotatable 3D model so we can see what's going on there. All right, we got our heart and our lungs here on visible body and I'm going to fade the lungs so we can see what's going on inside there. All right, here's our heart. Actually, you know what I think I'm going to do? You guys can see where the lungs are. I'm actually going to hide the lungs. All right, so we can see, just keep in mind, all everything you see over here is inside the right lung. Everything you see over here is inside the left lung. All right, so we said that that oxygen-poor blood is coming from locations all across the body back in here over to the right atrium. 
All right, and remember you've got a large vein down in here that's called the inferior vena cava. You've got a large vein up in here, the superior vena cava. Both of those are bringing that deoxygenated blood back to the right-hand side of the heart. Um, and then inside here, that blood is passing through the tricuspid valve into the left ventricle. And then from the left ventricle, uh, I'm sorry, the right ventricle, <laughs> the right ventricle, not the left, it um, gets forced upward into the pulmonary trunk. There's the base, there's the rest of your pulmonary trunk. So it's passing that pulmonic semilunar valve. All right, and then it's going to flow from there. Let me deselect those over here. And I'll tell you what, let me get rid of our aorta for a minute. It's bugging me. I'm going to hide it. There we go. I stripped the aorta off so we can see what's going on here a little bit better. So there's your pulmonary trunk. Blood is flowing um, this way over to the left lung and this way over to the right lung. So everything you see highlighted in light blue there, those are all uh, pulmonary arteries that are carrying this deoxygenated blood and distributing it, distributing it all throughout the lungs. And those pulmonary arteries are leading to pulmonary arterioles in specific locations. You know, if you really zoomed in, down to a more of a microscopic level, you would see the arterioles. Those then lead to pulmonary capillary. They're really capillary beds. They're like a network of capillaries that wrap around little microscopic air sacs in the lungs where gas exchange takes place. All right, so now our blood has picked up its oxygen gas and has given up its CO2. And then that blood uh, flows away from those little tiny air sacs into pulmonary venules. Those lead to pulmonary veins. Oops, I'm sorry. Wrong thing there. Clicked on the wrong color. Here we go. Pulmonary veins, which I'm going to highlight in light blue. Your pulmonary veins are colored red instead of blue because they have oxygenated blood. So everything you see there are a whole bunch of pulmonary veins from the left and the right hand side of the heart that now have oxygen rich blood. And if we rotate around here to the back, kind of zoom in right in here in this area, you've got two larger pulmonary veins with oxygen rich blood that then flow in here on this side into the left atrium. And over here, let me deselect all. I'm going to get rid of, these are actually air uh, bronchi with air on the inside. Let me hide those. Let me hide that. All right, so everything you see highlighted in blue over here um, are pulmonary veins on the right-hand side of the heart. And all that blood eventually drains into two larger ones right there and right there that connect over here into your left atrium. Okay, so that oxygen-rich blood from both lungs is going to lead back over into the left atrium. All right, deselect that. The other thing, in light pink, invisible body, what you're seeing here that I'm highlighting now in light pink, those are all... Um, bronchi and bronchioles, the air-filled tubes that extend from the trachea. Remember your trachea, your windpipe branches into a left bronchus and a right bronchus and then that brings air into your left and your right lungs and those bronchi divide up into smaller and smaller branches kind of like a tree would to distribute air all across the left and the right lungs. So those air-filled tubes are networked in there with your pulmonary arteries and your pulmonary veins within the lungs. So lots of blood, lots of air flowing through your lungs at any given time. All right, that's your pathway of uh, blood through the um, pulmonary circuit. And then, of course, the left-hand side of your heart is responsible for plump pumping blood out into the systemic circuit. So once that oxygen-rich blood comes back into the left atrium, it's going to pass the mitral valve 
also known as your bicuspid valve. And do be familiar with both of those terms because you will see both of them used. And then that blood enters the left ventricle. The left ventricle and the right ventricle actually contract at the same time. Um, the left ventricle pushes that blood past the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta. And the aorta is your first big gigantic artery, which is going to divide up into um, other smaller arteries that are going to take oxygen-rich blood throughout the body. So that's going to lead to your systemic circulation. All right, so definitely start learning this pathway of blood through the heart. And this is all really one story, okay, because your pulmonary circuit um, starts at the right atrium and uh, finishes at the left atrium, but then you pick up over here. It's all one story. Left atrium and then to the aorta. So you should know that story all the way from your superior vena cava and your inferior vena cava bringing blood into the right atrium. And then what is the pathway from there all the way to the uh, aorta and out to your systemic circulation. Learn that now. It'll make life easier for you as well when we start covering blood vessels in uh, Unit 3. This diagram uh, from your textbook, you should take a look at this. And it's just a diagram um, which is walking you through exactly what I just talked about with the blood flow um, through the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit and how all of that takes place. <clears throat> And here on the diagram, you see, like right in here, you see how they kind of have the pulmonary capillaries drawn as a little network. That's because those microscopic blood vessels where gas exchange takes place, they divide up into kind of a netting like that that's called a capillary bed. And same thing in tissues distributed throughout your body. When you get down to the capillary level, that's where oxygen leaves those blood vessels and gets into your um, interstitial fluids around your, uh, the cells in your tissues. Um, where that those types of exchanges are taking place. You have capillary beds where the capillaries more or less kind of look like a network where that's happening. All right, the next video lecture, we need to talk about um, something we really have not covered yet, and that is the coronary circulation. So the walls of the heart are very metabolically active, obviously, because your heart beats for your entire lifetime. And um, so your, uh, um, your cardiac muscle cells in your myocardium, remember the most of the wall of the heart is called the myocardium and it's jam-packed full of cardiac muscle cells or muscle fibers. Um, they need lots of nutrients, oxygen gas. They're beating all the time. They're generating lots of CO2 and other wastes that have to be taken away. Well, the walls of the heart do not get their oxygenated blood from blood passing through your heart chambers. That especially wouldn't work over on the right hand side of the heart because the blood over on the right hand side of the heart is uh, has low oxygen levels and high CO2 levels. So the walls of your heart actually have their own system of blood vessels that we'll talk about and that's called the coronary circulation and we'll cover that in uh, lecture number six.